Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to show you how to take a PDF and turn it into something that your students can type on so that they can respond to what you're giving them. So a lot of times we find PDFs online um, and you can go ahead and download those and then add them to your Google Drive. Um, so I have one here that I found for free. It is from TPT and we do recommend that you are pretty selective with those. Make sure that they are of good quality. Um, what you want to do first is find the PDF that you're going to use and double click to open it. You'll see right now that I can't see the entire thing on my screen. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to minimize my screen a little bit. So on my machine, I can press control minus and make my screen zoom out so that I can actually see the entire thing. So I've got it a little bit better there. Um, I can actually even make sure that we've got it like that so that it doesn't show those page numbers down on the bottom. The next thing that you're going to do is turn this into an image. And in order to do that, you're going to use the snipping tool. So if you have not used the snipping tool before, you'll go down to your Windows icon in the bottom left corner. Yours may have a circle with the window in it or look the same as mine. And you simply start typing in snip. When you're doing that, you'll notice that the snipping tool app pops up. Now this is only a Windows app. So if you're not on a Windows device, you won't be able to use this. Now here's the tool that you wanna use and you'll notice that I can click on it and drag it to move it around. I first wanna make sure that it is not covering up anything that I'm going to be um, turning into my image so that it doesn't show up on my students page. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it is in the mode that I wanna use. I'm gonna do a rectangular snip for this, which I believe is the default setting. And what that will do is that will let me make it into a perfectly um, shaped rectangle or a piece of paper look. Next, I'm gonna to go to new, and you'll notice now that that part turns into a light blue color. And when I move, uh, there we go. When I move over here, I get those little crosshairs. Now, wherever you click, and drag, that's what it's going to make a picture of. So what I wanna do is I wanna get as much of this page as I can so that I can make it into an image, like I said. Now you'll go all the way down here and I'm kind of picky, so I like to make sure that it's the same kind of white outline all the way around. So that's pretty good, not 100% perfect, but you get the idea. The next thing that you wanna do is come up to the top and save this snip. Now you can save it wherever you want. I tend to put mine directly onto my desktop because I'm only going to be using it for this and then I'll most likely get rid of it. So I'm going to call this my TPT page for now just so that I can find it easily. And you'll want to make sure that it is in an image um, choice. So you have it as a JPEG right now that you'll be able to use for the um, piece that we're going to be doing next. So you'll click it on JPEG if it's not already there. Let's see, I got the wrong thing. There we go. And save. Now I can actually minimize this because I'm not going to be using this again right now. Next thing that I want to do is go back to my drive and now I'm going to be creating a new slide. I can go here to the slides and click create and share. And you've got to do just a little bit of work to get things started here. The first thing you're going to do, obviously, is name it. So mine's going to be the same name that I had for my saved image. The next thing you're going to be doing is going to your file and page setup. Now, we wanted this to look like a worksheet. So right now, instead of it being in widescreen, I'm going to click this downward arrow and go to custom and I will simply put in the dimensions for the piece of paper. So it is eight and a half by 11. And apply, you'll notice the image will change. So you see now that it is more in a portrait view and it looks like the same size as the piece of paper. These boxes here I'm going to get rid of for now. You could actually go in and get a blank if you wanted to and delete this one, whatever's better for you. Um, the next thing that we're going to do here is go up to that background piece. From here, I'm actually going to choose an image. Remember that image that we made with our snipping tool? That's what I want to put in my background. So I have saved this on my computer so I can simply click browse. Mine is on my desktop and it was called TPT page. There it is. I can click on that. It fills in the box for the file name and I click open. 
Now, all I need to do is press done and you'll see that it shows up here. Now, the nice thing with this is that it looks like the image that I wanted from before. I don't need any themes, so I'm going to close this. The piece that's not here is that we need our students to be able to still type on this. Right now, they wouldn't be able to do any typing. So you can do one of two things. You could go ahead and click on text box and put text boxes in all of the spaces that you want them to type on. You might even put directions here. Title goes here. And then they would be able to click on that text box and delete your instructions and start typing. If you feel like your students can handle it, you can ask them to simply put in a text box. And when they go to it, they would just put in a text box and type their answer. So it depends on the um, level that your students are at with their comfort. Let me get rid of this one here. There we go. So you can see that you would be able to go through and put all of the different text boxes in the spaces that you want. For a section like this, if you were going to use a text box, you might even do the whole thing. It'll get a little bit tricky with the size of the font, so you could even change that for them. And then that way, it should type on each line. See, this one's not going to, so you might even do a little bit more work with some spacing. Okay, so those are all minor things, but you get the idea of how to put in these text boxes so now your student will be able to use this. You would want to put this into your Google Classroom as an assignment and make a copy for each student, and they would be able to type in those text boxes and return their work. Hope that this helps everyone. Enjoy.